This is Jamie from Stonemeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about how to survive and thrive as a creator, as a game designer or a game publisher on BoardGameGeek. I have an article that lists 10 things. I'm going to kind of focus on five of them really quick. One, I highly recommend that you subscribe to yourself and to your games on BoardGameGeek. That way, in your feed that you get on BoardGameGeek, you can see whenever someone mentions your game um, or yourself, and you can go there, or your publishing company, and you can go there, and typically you're there to answer questions. Um, at least that's the way I do it. Um, answer questions, interact with people, give clarifications, share news, uh, things like that. Uh, two is kind of related to that, which is um, I've had some experiences uh, early on in my company where I would interact on reviews of my games on Working Geek. And I kind of learned the hard way that that's generally not a good idea. Um, it makes people a little uncomfortable if you, the creator or the designer, jump in on a review unless they specifically ask you a question. Like they say, hey, Jamie, why did you make this design decision? That's, that's a chance for you to jump in there. But otherwise, people generally just want to have a safe space where they can talk about the game and talk about their feelings of the game without having you jump in there. Uh, three, Board Game Geek ads, uh, I think, are, are great if... Uh, you have a specific place you want to send people, um, and if that place is really well designed. So an ad is only as effective as the destination where that ad is taking people. And so if your Kickstarter page or your crowdfunding project page isn't very well designed, isn't very compelling, even the greatest boarding week ad in the world shown to millions of people isn't going to do anything. Uh, four, I highly recommend that other, cre other creators um, and designers and publishers read the news on BoardGameGeek. It's right at the front of the, the main page on BoardGameGeek, and Eric Martin does a great job of posting a lot of relevant news, sometimes even twice a day, about different games, what other companies are doing, and this can, I, I think this can save you a lot of time if you're designing the same game that someone else is already designing, or it might inspire you. There's just a lot of great stuff to come from that. And last, uh, the BoardGameGeek hotness section. We all want to get on the hotness, so people are excited about our games. Um, and there, I guess a few ways that you can do that is to post a lot of images, or not a lot of images, post good images to BoardGameGeek, um, link to your game, uh, either the images or the game on BoardGameGeek from other sources like your e-newsletter, your Facebook page, um, post polls about your game. So if you're designing something and you're trying to figure out which direction to take, uh, host a poll, put an image on there, host a poll for that. And last, uh, kind of as I referred to before, just participate in conversation. Encourage conversation about your game on Board Game Week, and that may elevate it on the hotness as well. Uh, if you have any other thoughts about this topic, I'd love to hear them in the comments, or you can go to my article about it, Top 10 Ways to Survive and Thrive on Board Game Week. Thanks.